everyone. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the polar form complex numbers, which is going to look familiar to you from Calc 3. Uh, it's just the fact that we can represent complex numbers as points in the plane, and a point in the plane can be represented in multiple ways, right? So one way is in terms of its Cartesian coordinates. So if I've got x as the x value of this point, and y as the y value, so I'm thinking of z as x plus i y as a, as a complex number. The y axis is the i direction, right? Um, then x and y are really just the Cartesian coordinates for that point, if I'm thinking of that point as living in uh, R2, the plane, right? But there's another way of describing this point. You know, if I want to tell you where this point is, I don't have to give you that information in terms of Cartesian coordinates. I could instead tell you how far it is from zero, which tells you um, that it, you know, that it's on some some circle, a certain distance from the origin, and then I need to tell you where on that circle, which means I need to give you the angle, right? So I can express, I can tell you exactly where this point Z is um, in what's called polar form. So if I name this R, and this triangle has height y, um, by just saying what R and theta are. Right, and, and we know how to convert uh, from one to the other. So by the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle is square root of x squared plus y squared. And to calculate theta, you can use some trigonometry. So actually, what's easier? Um, tangent of theta, I know that that's opposite over adjacent, so that's y over x. And so theta, therefore, is the inverse tangent of y over x. So that's how I get the, the polar coordinates, in other words, the, the r and the theta, given the Cartesian coordinates. So that's just another way of representing a complex number. Alternatively, if someone gives you a complex number as, as a point in the plane and they tell you what r and theta are, you can recover x and y, again using trigonometry, um, we know that x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r times sine theta. And so, in other words, so if this is my point z, so if z has polar coordinates r and theta, then in terms of its real and imaginary part as a complex number, um, its real part is r cosine theta, and its imaginary part is r sine theta. Okay, so this is really nothing new um, from Calc 3, but now we're thinking of these points as complex numbers. Okay, and the reason that's useful is it turns out that multiplying complex numbers is really hard in Cartesian coordinates, well, not really hard, but it's tedious. But it turns out to be really easy in terms of the polar coordinates, which is kind of remarkable because it's defined using Cartesian coordinates and just the fact that i squared is minus one. Um, so it's it's kind of amazing actually that that polar coordinates would have anything to do with this story. So so two miracles, and I mean. You know, really, really think about how shocking this is. It's there's no reason a priori to expect these two facts to be true. Um, oh, by the way, so 
another word for r, as we mentioned in class, is write that as the absolute value of z, or the modulus of z. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be using that notation. Um, okay, so the, the first miracle is what happens to the size, or the absolute value of two complex numbers when you multiply them together. So if I have two complex numbers, z1 and z2, and I want to look at the distance uh, from the origin of their product, the modulus of their product, that's just going to be the product of the moduli. So it's the product of the two distances from the origin. Okay, that by itself is kind of surprising. And the other miracle, which is even weirder, um, oh, I forgot to say another thing. So th this, this is called the modulus of z, right? And theta is called the argument of z. So we write, um, so the side here, we'd write arg z equals theta, which just means theta is the, the argument of z, which just means theta is the angle counterclockwise from the x-axis, from the positive x-axis. Um, it's the angle I travel to get from there to z, from the x-axis to z. Okay, so we call those the, the modulus is, is the r, and the argument is the theta. Okay, just makes it easier to state these two miracles. Um, so given two complex numbers, given complex numbers, z1 and z2, then the moduli um, of the product is the product of the modulus. And uh, if, I, if I look at their arguments, the, the argument of z1 times z2, so the angle of z1 times z2 from the x-axis is going to be equal to um, the sum of the arguments. Okay, so um, So what that means is that I add the angles. I add the angles, and that gives me the new angle corresponding to the product of the two complex numbers. So I'm, I'm not going to prove this in the lecture because it's, at least yet, uh, because th th there is a proof, but it's not particularly enlightening. But I'll do an example. So first, let me just draw a picture here. So if this is z1, it has argument theta1. And let's say this is z2, has argument, let's use some colors here. z2 has argument theta2. Then, um, where is, where is z1 times z2 going to be? Well, I need to add the two angles. So I add this theta1 to theta2. So I do theta1 again. And this line then its angle from the x-axis is theta1 plus theta2. And so what, what Miracle 2 is saying is that z1 times z2 lies somewhere on this line. And by this line, I mean that one. Because I know what the argument is. It's, it's the sum of the two arguments, so it's got to have angle theta 1 plus theta 2 from the x-axis. Um, so as you can see, multiplying complex numbers is, is really quite geometric. It has a lot to do with the, um, the geometry of where these numbers are on the plane. 
Um, and you know, further, if I wanted to see exactly where on this line it was, I would measure this distance and that distance and multiply them together. So it'd be out here somewhere. Okay, so like I said, I'm not gonna prove either of these miracles right now. Uh, miracle one, you can prove on your own pretty easily. Um, but let's just do an example just to just to see. So let's say z1 is equal to 2i. I'm going to I'm going to choose complex numbers with simple angles to calculate. And z2 is uh, 4 plus 3i. So if I draw these, let's see. Looks something like this. So z2 is um, 4 plus 3i, so it's right here. And I, I chose this so that it would have an angle of 30 degrees or uh, pi over 6 from the x-axis. And then 2i is even easier, right? That's just right here. So this is z1 and this is z2. Here's theta one. And here's theta two. Theta two is pi over two, theta one is pi over six. Um, let's just multiply these together by hand and see see if see if it uh, ends up being what I'm saying, which is that the arguments should add together to get the new argument. So z1 times z2 is 2i times 4 plus 3i. So I just multiply piece by piece. So 2i times 4 is 8i. 2i times 3i is 6i squared. Uh, but that's just minus 1, right? And so I can write this in the sort of standard form real part first. It's going to be minus 6 plus 8i. Okay, so um, I think I barely have enough room here. So the real part is minus 6. So it's there. The imaginary part is going up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's over here. This isn't perfect, but... This is the product, z1 times z2. And the thing to notice here is that if I draw this line here. Um, this is 8, distance 8. This is a distance 6 on this, on this red triangle. Uh, but compare that to this blue triangle. Here I've got distance 4, here dif distance 3. So the red and the blue are similar triangles, which means I know what this angle is here. This is going to be theta 1, because red triangle is simul similar to blue triangle, so those angles are the same. And what you see then is that the argument of z1 times z2 is going to be, uh, well, what is it? It's, it's theta 1 plus the rest of it, which is theta 2. So that proves the miracle in this special case, at least. Um, if, you, if you actually want to prove these, uh, again, one is easy using rectangular coordinates. It's a good exercise. Um, proof of miracle two, well, you'd write z1 as r1 cosine theta1 plus r1 sine theta1 times i. And same with z2. You'd, you'd first express it in polar coordinates, convert those to rectangular, so it looks like this. And the reason you have to do this is officially we only know how to multiply the rectangular coordinates together. That's how we defined multiplication. And you, you can show that z1 times z2, if you express them both this way, is going to be equal to r1 times r2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i r1 times r2 
sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And the, the way you prove this, it ends up using law of cosines and law of sines, which, <laughs> which is a, a fact that we have to use sometimes. So anyway, it's, it's not very, you don't learn much by going through this proof, but you can just manipulate the algebra and it ends up working out. So it really is a miracle, at least right now. Um, okay, that's, that's almost all I wanted to say, but let me finish with uh, one, one really useful thing that this gives us, this fact about the arguments and how they change when you multiply two complex numbers. Well, let's say I, I choose some complex number z, so it's x plus iy. Um, I'm going to define a new complex number just by changing the imaginary part to its negative. So I'm going to denote this as z bar. I'm going to define it to be x minus iy. So I just flip the, the negative part, add a minus sign to it. And this is this is called the um, complex conjugate, or sometimes just the conjugate of z. Now let's let's graph these. So let's say this is x. Here's i y. So if if this is z right here, what have I done with z conjugate? I've just changed the y coordinate to be minus y. So it's it's kind of the reflection of z across the x-axis. That's what z conjugate looks like. Then notice that if this angle is theta, then this angle here is just 2 pi minus theta, as you can see from the picture, because it's a reflection. In other words, the argument of z bar, z conjugate, is 2 pi minus the argument of z. And when I multiply these, I add the arguments together. And so the argument of the product, z times z bar, is going to be 2 pi, which is saying it's an angle of 2 pi from the x-axis, positive x-axis. But that's the same as angle 0. And so this, this argument is 0. I go theta, then I go 2 pi minus theta, which means I'm back on the x-axis. If the argument is 0, it's on the x-axis, that means it's a real number. So z times z bar has no imaginary part. It's, it's entirely real. And if you think about it, well, the the modulus of z bar, the, the distance from the origin, is exactly the same as the modulus of z, as you, as you can see from the picture. And remember, when you multiply complex numbers, the moduli, moduluses get multiplied. So we also see that the modulus, or the absolute value of z times z bar, well, that's equal to this. Uh, but modulus of z bar is equal to modulus of z, so this is just modulus of z squared. Okay, so I have a real number whose distance from zero is modulus of z squared. So that's that's um, what the product is. So since this is real, and since I know it's modulus, I know exactly what real number it is. It's just that. Okay, so I, I know I went a little bit fast here. Um, but check this by hand. So you've got the coordinates for z and z bar, and um, multiply them together and check that you get a real number and check that that real number is equal to the square of the modulus. And you can do that quite quickly. But once we have this equation, this is great because I, I know I asked in the last lecture, how do you divide complex numbers? There was no easy answer, but we do know how to divide real numbers. And so um, it makes sense to divide by this, because this is a real number. And so what this means is that z times z bar over the modulus of z bar, this is equal to 1. 
And so if you've had abstract algebra, what this is saying is that this number here is, is the multiplicative inverse to z. It's the number that when I multiply it by z, gives me 1. And in other words, I could, you know, if I can divide by complex numbers, I could divide by z on both sides. And so what this is saying is that the modulus of z divided by this real number, sorry, the conjugate of z divided by this real number modulus of z squared, this, this, is, the, this is another way of expressing 1 over z. Okay, so if, if someone asks you to divide by the complex number z, if you want to divide by a complex number z, the way to do that, since, since these are equal, you can instead just multiply. We do know how to multiply complex numbers. You can multiply by the conjugate of z and then divide by a real number, you know how to divide by real numbers, uh, modulus of z squared. So, so you multiply by this complex number, and that's the same as dividing by z. And so this fact about the arguments gives us a way of dividing by complex numbers. And we'll talk more about that um, as we go on.